here, I'm going to show you how to apply conditional formatting to multiple cells using a single formula in Excel. So we will create a single nice working custom conditional formatting formula in the worksheet and then very quickly apply it to an entire data range at once. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right, so what I'm going to do here first is explain the premise of how this is going to work and then go over a very basic, simple example and then expand on that example to make things a bit more complex yet still following the original premise that I'm about to cover. So let's first go with that premise. How does this work? What are we talking about? At the end of the day, it all comes down to absolute and relative cell references. So let's go with the basic example. Let's say that I want this to highlight red if the cell is empty. And I also want this one to do it and this one to do it. Well, how do I do that using a simple formula? So the first thing is to make the formula. And I know you don't have to use a formula for simple examples like this, but we're gonna start simple and get more complex. So the first thing is to create the formula. And all you need is a formula that returns true or false. Remember, that's all you need for your conditional formatting custom formulas. In this case, we're going to use the isBlank function, which returns true if the cell is empty and false if it is not. So perfect for conditional formatting. So how do I get it to apply to this cell? Well, I just set it equal to B2. Then how do I get it to work for B3 and B4? You use relative cell references. Notice no dollar signs here. So this is the same premise as using formulas in the worksheet and copying them down, where B2 has now become B3 and B4 here. You can test it out. If I delete this value, this becomes true. It would then be highlighted by conditional formatting and so on for the other ones. So what we can then do is apply this right here to the entire range. And when conditional formatting applies the formula, it will update because it's using relative cell references. So the formula updates just like it did here in the worksheet. It updates within conditional formatting in the background. So this one will be for B2, this one B3, and this one B4. All that means is that you have to get your cell references, your absolute and relative references all correct before you go to apply the conditional formatting. So let's go ahead and apply this simple example. I select this guy, copy it, then select the cells to which I would like to apply the formatting, go to conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format, paste that in there, Remember, it's much easier to make this formula in the worksheet and then paste it in here. Go to Format. Let's say we want a fill color of red if you don't fill in the value. Hit OK. Hit OK. And let's test it out now. Perfect. 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 And notice when I empty them out, you can see these updating as well. And that represents what's happening with the conditional formatting in the background. Put a number back in here, and the red goes away because this formula evaluates to false. Now, that is the main premise of it. That's how it works. So let us go ahead and do some variations of that. First up is let's say that we want this to also be red when this is empty. We want both of them to be red when it's empty. How do we do that? Easiest way to figure out how to get it working correctly is build it out in the worksheet. So we have this column right here. It works for this. All right, so let's do just what conditional formatting would do. We copy this over one. Now, let me empty this out. This one's true. This one is not true. What happened? Well, it's now A2 because the column references are also relative, not absolute. So it updated, went one to the left which means that when this is empty, this one will not highlight red. Watch when I delete this. This then becomes true, which means conditional formatting, if I were to apply it the same way I applied this, would then update this to red. So how do we get it 
to apply to both columns. You just make sure you have the formulas working here first. You go over here. You put your dollar sign in front of the column so that it will not change. You can copy that guy down, copy him to the left. Now let's test it out. I'm going to delete this and both of them become true because both of them, B2 and B2, they both have the same column and row reference. They're already in the same row, that's never going to change, but they're in different columns and the dollar sign in front of the B prevents that column reference from changing. So now what we can do is, well, let's go here and delete the conditional formatting. And let's go put in another number. Now, let us apply this guy to the entire table. Very, very easy. Select the data to which you would like it to apply. We've already verified that the formula is going to update correctly. Conditional formatting once again. New rule. Formula to determine which cells to format. Paste it in there. Format. Red. OK. OK. All right, now let's delete it. Perfect. How about down here? Perfect. Now, what if I just delete the store? Perfect. We did not want this entire row to go red when we deleted the store value, only when we delete the sales value. Now, this is where it starts to get tricky and people start to get a bit confused, understandably so. But what I like to do is just to think about this as a dry run for the conditional formatting, how the conditional formatting is going to see things. So just build a series of formulas, start up here in whichever corner you want, build a kind of wall of conditional formatting formulas out here that mirrors your data set to which you want to apply those formulas. Start with a single cell, get it working correctly, copy it down, copy it over until you have this two by three here that mirrors the two by three right here. If you had more cells, you'd make this even bigger. And then you can play around with your data set just like we did out here, hit delete, and make sure these guys update exactly how you want them to update. Then when you're good to go, you apply it to the data set like I just showed you how to do. So the hard part is just to get the formula correct. It's a really simple thing when you're dealing with formulas in the worksheet. I put a dollar sign here, I put a dollar sign there. Life's good, no problem. It's just more confusing when it's conditional formatting because you can't see it update. It's in the background. So now let's move on beyond this basic example and get things to be a little bit more difficult. Conditional formatting, clear rules, entire sheet. All right, let us do a multi-cell check. All that means is that we're gonna include multiple cells here. And this time, let's say that when we start to build out this template, when I start to put a value here, I know how many stores I'm going to have. So I wanna make sure that I put values here or I want to turn them red. As in, you're creating a store template? Okay, make sure you put three stores. I'm gonna show you a reminder of a red background if you forget a store. So what does that mean? It means that each one of these cells needs to check itself and cell A1. One of the cell references needs to change for each row. One does not, it must stay the same. For this, we're going to make two separate checks and I've got everything nice and neat right here, but let's build it out in separate pieces first, make our life a little bit easier. So zoom in a little bit more and for the first check, we want to see if A1 is going to be blank or not. So we do our is blank and we select A1 and there we go. But remember, we do not want this to update when we copy it down. So we can click in here, hit F4 once, get the dollar signs in front of the column and the row. That means it will never change. I can copy it to the right. I can copy it down. It will always be A1. Perfect. Now let's go for the second check equals is blank. And this time we want it to be for A2. 
I want it to be able to change when I copy it up and down, but if I ever want to copy it to the right, I don't want the column to change. So even though in this case I don't need it right now, I'm going to go ahead and put the dollar sign in front of the column. That way it'll update when I copy it between the rows, but never if I change my mind in the future and copy it between the columns. Now I have two is blank functions, but I only want this one to trigger conditional formatting if there is a value in the cell, not if it is blank. So what I want to do here is to reverse false and make that true. How do I do that? I put not in front of it. Now you can make your checks however you want to make them. Right here, I'm just adding a little bit more logic to my test so that it works how I want it to work. Now when we do this, we are going to combine it using the AND function. I want this test to be true AND this test to be true. Let's test it with A2. Let's say I delete this. It now becomes true. We would get red. But now if I delete this, it should become false again. Perfect. Because I don't want the conditional formatting checks here to appear unless I have a value in A1. I will back that up. Now let's combine it into its full form. And the easy way to do that is to go down here and grab this, go up here, paste it in place, and go down here. This is the standard way to make larger, more complex formulas. Copy it and paste it over there. And that is our final formula. I'm going to go ahead and copy this guy down. Remember, we want to test it before we apply it. So we see here this applies to A1 and A2. This one, A1 and A3. This one, A1 and A4. Looks good. All right, looks good. So let's grab this guy, copy it, go up here, and then conditional formatting, new rule, formula, paste it in, format, red, and, all right, let's test it out. Store one, store three. Let's remove the title. Perfect. So now we have applied a more complex conditional formatting custom formula to multiple cells with absolute and relative cell references included using one simple single selection of those cells and one conditional formatting rule. If you are able to follow this tutorial up to this point, you are probably pretty much good. I think that you would be able to handle just about any custom conditional formatting rule and apply it correctly. Just take your time, get everything working correctly out here in the worksheet, build your wall of formulas that mirrors where you would like to apply them, test everything, then at the very end, apply your conditional formatting. Now, before we go, I'm going to show you one more little example. It's not going to be as complex as this. It's just going to apply to more cells. So let's go to example two. And here we have more stores and sales data. And down here, I have some target sales data for each month. I used the rand between function for this, so it's a little bit goofy looking. But what we want to do is to highlight all of these cells that have missed their sales targets for the month. How do we do that? Well, let us begin to build our wall of formulas. We'll start here and we will mirror this cell right here, B2. So I want to see if this guy is lower than this guy. Since we use a comparison operator, the less than sign, we could use any of them, less than, greater than, less than, or equal to any of the comparison operator signs, it will return true or false. So false, because 25665 is not lower than 10 to 98. What do we want to do with this? We want to be able to copy it to the right, but also down. So do I need to make any absolute cell references anywhere? With the target, I do. With the table references, I do not. Those must go to the right and down. Target must only go to the right. We go to B7, and right before the row, 
you input your dollar sign just like that. It almost seems too simple compared to what we just did. So let's make our wall of formulas. Let's make a small wall so it all fits on the same screen. Copy it down and test it out. So that applies to that, that to that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So let's go here, grab our nice, neat, simple formula, control C to copy it. Select all of the cells to apply it to, conditional formatting, new rule, formulas, paste it in there, format, red. Okay, okay, there we go. That is a lot of red. March and April have not been good months, apparently. So that is perfect. You see now it's quite easy to apply conditional formatting to multiple cells with a single, simple, or complex formula. Just take your time, get everything working out here in the spreadsheet first, and then the very last thing you do is apply the conditional formatting. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.